So Leo Bunting asks, uh, hi, sir, could you look at my essay on Curly's introduction? Uh, well, it does look very short, but let's see how you do. Steinbeck presents Curly. Please don't forget the capitals. The examiner will go nuts and look at how you've changed the spelling. Um, in this extract, as an aggressive, arrogant, yet conflicted character, just once will do, and uses it to symbolize the theme of conflict in the wider novella. Now, that's a very good introductory sentence. Um, why is he introducing the theme of conflict, though? Now, that's a second sentence. What is Steinbeck trying to say about conflict uh, and the violence inherent in men? Uh, or, if you prefer to include, include Curly's wife in this, mankind. Uh, to begin with, at the start of the extract, Stein, you don't need any of that. Yeah, so Steinbeck presents Curly as a source of evil. He writes that a brown face and a great head of uh, tightly curled hair. Um, that's a clumsy way to get to your quotation. So he describes Curly as having a brown face and a head of tightly curled hair. You want your quotations to sit in your sentence. The adjective brown is key to Curly's personality. Uh, that's a good idea. Let's see if you back it up. In the novella, Steinbeck uses light as an extended metaphor for hope. Very good. And thus, by describing Curly as a dark colour, he's using Curly as a symbol and source of hatred, conflict and hopelessness. Um, that's pretty good. It would help if you had an example of how light is used as a symbol of hope. Um, for example, Lenny saying, I seen your light um, to Crooks. Uh, symbolically, Lenny seeing the goodness in Crooks, the only person uh, arguably to see beyond the colour of his skin. Uh, this also foreshadows, uh, good, the way in which Curly acts as a negative catalyst for every narrative point within the plot. Well, that's a brilliant statement. Um, you need to prove it. Uh, don't move on to your next quotation until you've proved this fantastic idea. Um, you know, a couple of sentences would do it. Uh, and then link that to why Steinbeck has decided it's Curly who should carry uh, or should be that negative catalyst. Now, that's a very sophisticated A-star idea, which you don't really get credit for because you've made it and then ignored it, not proved it. Uh, tightly is another key adjective as it symbolises Curly's personality as tightly wound, angry, aggressive and unstable. Good. And then again, a couple of examples you know, how he picks on the weak, how he picks on Lenny. Um, alternatively, it could be interpreted as a further example of how he is conflict-driven. His entire body is geared towards winning a fight, which perhaps further symbolises Steinbeck's view on human nature, that we are all geared towards surviving. So Curly is merely an extreme example of something inherent within all of humanity. Uh, that's very well expressed, but again... Some examples would really help. Um, at the minute, you're building these massive interpretations from just single word quotations. It's the equivalent of building your house on the sand while the tide is coming in. Uh, give those examples and your A-star ideas will um, get the grade they deserve. Alternately, perhaps this is a critique of the Wall Street crash and poverty that it strips away any caring, loving or human attributes and creates a world where the most violent, aggressive and evil prosper, like Curly. Um, that's true, but when you say this is a critique, it refers back to your two quotations, which of course isn't true. You mean the whole novel is a critique, and that's why Curly is presented at the heart of it, but you haven't spelt that out. Later in the extract, Steinbeck shows the effect of class upon Curly's character. Uh, he writes, like the boss, he wore high-heeled boots. The word like is key here as it immediately shows Curly to be separate from the ranch workers as someone with privilege, good. Thus, Curly is a construct for Steinbeck to critique power, money and wealth, especially in an era like the 1930s where poverty was common. Uh, yes... Uh, so how does the portrayal of Curly show that he's attacking the powerful? Um, you need to be explicit there. Steinbeck believes 
that unequal distribution of wealth only leads to conflict. Good, that's a good explanation. With characters like Curly being allowed an unjust power above others, which links to Steinbeck's wider theme of conflict. Um, not, well, actually, I'd say it was the other way around. The theme of conflict links to the wider theme of injustice and how um, those who have power apply it um, in an unjust way. In the extract, we also learn that Curly wears a work glove. This work glove is full of Vaseline. Well done. That's how you integrate your quotations into a sentence. Not like that. Uh, as we learn later in the chapter, it's used to keep his hands soft for his wife just opposing the rest of his personality. Uh, yeah, okay, what's the purpose um, behind that? Um, repeatedly in the novella, the characters are disgusted by this notion. And now you're going to tell us why um, it's included. One interpretation of this is that it's because it's another example of Curly's advertising his wife's sexuality and thus showing arrogance. Well, that's true. However, another more successful interpretation shows it as Curly trying to break out of the tough guy stereotype and soften himself. Um, that doesn't really work for us uh, with what else we know about the novel, particularly as Curly's wife's testimony to Lenny is that um, he's always talking about the old one too. You know, he, he's not soft with his wife either. He's, he's, the topics of conversation are all full of violence. And of course, we can also see how Desperately, she tries to escape him on the ranch, so there cannot be a soft side to him. Uh, yet both the men and his wife focus on his meanness, and thus it's fated to be a failure. Good, and we might talk here about why Curly's attempt at softness fails. Um, it's only superficial, it's not skin deep, it's literally between the skin and the glove. This shows Curly to be oppressed by the sexist society, of the 1930s. That's interesting. Uh, so what you're suggesting is that Curly behaves in this ultra-masculine way because society has told him that that's the way that men ought to behave. Um, but you haven't really spelt that out. It's an intriguing idea. Uh, and conflicted by who he is and society's predetermined role. Um, okay, that's a really good idea which you need to develop. So will this get an A star? No, it's much too short. Um, it's written very well, but uh, you need more examples. Um, so at the minute, the examiner is thinking, has he written enough to, to be consistent? Um, can I give him an A? Uh, he writes like a student with the vocabulary. He certainly deserves an A. But has he given me enough examples uh, to back it up? and uh, possibly under exam conditions I might do that. Anyway, good luck. If you'd like more videos, don't forget to subscribe.